notion, Alison? A high notion is about them glasses. One, one's got a black thing on Because my eyes is sick. Oh, that's a patch, I think you're thinking. You're... And my eyes is sick because it was dark. It was dark. Where was it dark? These children are Londoners. Most of them were born within a short distance of the school they attend every day. They're learning to adapt to life at school. They have no need to adapt to their environment, for it's the only one they've ever known. But the parents of some of these children and many of their elder brothers and sisters spent their formative years some 4,000 miles from Britain, in the islands of the Caribbean, the West Indies. Soon after their discovery by Columbus, the West Indies became the center of a power struggle, with various nations disputing the early monopoly of Spain. The British, French, Dutch, and Scandinavians quarreled and fought for the islands like a pack of hungry dogs. Islands held by one power were often snatched by another and then taken by a third. Buccaneers and adventurers attracted by the rich pickings, were soon to add to the confusion. Each colonizing power brought its customs, culture, religion, language, and disease. The native Indians, having no natural immunity to European maladies, suffered as much from illness as from the relentless advance of the oppressors. The gradual decline of the native population and the introduction of the profitable sugarcane crop soon created a demand for a new workforce. This demand was to be answered by the slave trade. The transportation of Africans to the West Indies began early in the 16th century and was to continue for 300 years. The first slaves were captured at random. But the industry grew. The English, Dutch and Portuguese set up forts along the west coast of Africa to house the hapless prisoners awaiting embarkation. The slaves were branded for identification, chained, then loaded aboard ship and stowed below decks with hardly an inch between them. In filth and misery, these unwilling immigrants made the long journey to their new home. For the survivors of the voyage, the future was bleak. Auctioned to the highest bidder, they were condemned to a life of toil on the plantations. With no possessions and no rights, they were at the mercy of their new owners. For those who attempted to escape, capture was swift. And punishment was brutal. To the descendants of these slaves, the Negro population of the West Indies, slavery is not a dim historical fact, but something which has shaped the pattern of their existence. The memory of slavery is their inheritance. Uh, it has had um, you know, tremendous effect uh, in several uh, fields. First, um, we have the, um, the family as such, the breakup of the family as we knew it in Africa. Then um, the attitude to law and authority is another important one. Um, culture, uh, whatever African culture we had um, brought with us, um, those things were lost, much was lost, and then we had the um, some retentions in religion, um, African religions like um, Shango and Voodoo. And um, also you had with um, the mingling of other cultures, Europe, uh, the East, various countries of Europe, uh, which at one time or other had um, uh, dominated certain islands in the Caribbean. And um, those things uh, all had an effect on the overall, the final pattern, uh, so to speak. The policy of the plantation owners was to encourage the growth of the population to swell the workforce. 
but with changing social patterns and an economy unable to support a large population, it became necessary for the people to seek employment outside the islands. When slavery was abolished in 1834, 1st of August 1834, the plantation owners discovered that they would have to pay wages to the slaves, a reasonable living wage. And uh, they were not entirely happy about that. That was in the beginning. So um, they decided instead to introduce indentured laborers from India, China, and Java, the East Indies. Ramadin was the descendant of one such, Ramadin Valentine, remember that. He was an East Indian, not an Indian, East Indian from Java. And, um, well, the Negroes uh, refused to work for the wages which the Indians um, agreed to work for. So they decided to, to emigrate. There was no work for them. Uh, they flooded, the British flooded the market with those indentured laborers from the East. So you find that the blacks had to go elsewhere. And they went to Brazil in large numbers. They went to Venezuela in large numbers. They went to Panama in large numbers, to Costa Rica, and uh, some to Cuba, and even to the southern United States. Well, that went on for, um, for decades, until the war broke out. And um, the, these countries decided to close the door, so to speak, on immigration from outside. And um, the only outlet left was um, the, the metropolitan country to which those particular islands belonged. If it was Holland, um, Curaçao, Aruba, St. Eustatia, Sabre, southern part of St. Martin, they went to Holland. Martinique, Guadeloupe, um, Cayenne, uh, they went to France. And the other islands, the Spanish islands were independent, so they didn't have to immigrate. But the British Caribbean islands, everybody well, came to England. That was the only door left open uh, for them. In the 1950s, Britain was glad to leave that door open. With industry, public transport and the health service severely understaffed, the inflow of immigrants from the West Indies promised mutual benefit. It's estimated that between 1955 and 1962, there were more than a quarter of a million arrivals from the Caribbean. The Commonwealth Immigration Act of 1962 restricted the numbers of entrants from all Commonwealth countries. After this, only those issued with employment vouchers and dependents of citizens already in Britain could be admitted. Although a high proportion of the immigrants came from Jamaica, many arrived from islands a thousand miles to the east, some hundreds of miles apart. All of them, except Barbados, were once possessed by powers other than Britain, and each island's culture retains traces of its former European dominance. The differences between the islands are as great as the distances between them. But these new arrivals had a common bond in their Commonwealth citizenship and their trust in the benevolence of the mother country. They regarded the metropolitan country, let's say England in this instance, as the mother country. And you expect of a mother the best of treatment. Now, the, the whole educational system in the Caribbean had um, prepared you for your arrival in England, or ought to have done. What he didn't tell, tell us was that the people would resent us on our arrival. So the books you read were English um, books. Your, um, the newspapers you read were either English or American. The films you saw were either English or American. Your religion was one of the Christian religions worshipped in, in, in Europe. The clothes you wore was also uh, English or what, American, whatever. So that you were, you, you were not coming to a strange country. Of all the groups recently immigrant to Britain, West Indians seemed in some ways the least prepared for the realities of life in this country. At home they'd been accustomed to seeing white men in positions of authority and had not expected to compete with them for employment. They'd not anticipated housing difficulties. 
but often the only accommodation available was in the decaying areas of large cities where the houses were old and the facilities limited. From the early stages of immigration, it was customary for children to be left in the Caribbean in the care of relatives until a home had been established and money saved for their passage. When such children joined their parents, they'd often arrive in Britain one day and start school the next. Adjustment to a new environment and to new relationships created stresses hard to bear. To many children, their natural parents were strangers. There were sometimes younger brothers and sisters born in England with an apparently greater claim on their mother's affection. At school, they experienced unfamiliar teaching methods and the strange experience of being black in a white community. With a traditional West Indian respect for learning, their parents had high expectations of their progress at school, yet required their considerable contribution to household tasks. Where both parents work, everyone must share in the running of the home. For some immigrant children, these pressures were too great, and teachers had to cope with the resulting emotional problems. There's been a tendency for West Indians to congregate together, to seek security in a known group where the patterns of behavior are familiar. For many, the process of social integration with the white community has been slow. Differences of culture, prejudice and suspicion are all contributory factors, and so, of course, is language. The first language of many West Indians is an English-based Creole, which might be regarded either as a dialect of English or as a separate language. Like most children, those of Caribbean origin use a number of spoken forms appropriate to the home, the school and the classroom. But only relatively recently has it been recognized that some children can experience such difficulties with classroom language that their educational performance is affected. The situation is not necessarily any easier for children born in this country to West Indian parents. The language of their preschool years has been the Creole-based English spoken at home. Because my eyes is sick. Well, that's a patch, I think you're thinking. You're... And my eyes is sick because it was dark. It was dark? Where was it dark? It was dark in in my bed in in the bedroom, and I had to see in the mirror. Did you? But not this eyes. You can't see so well with that eye. I, I can see. You can see, but you can't see so well out of one eye, can you? I can see with this eye and that one. You can see very well. And what did the doctor say? He just gave you some eye lotion. Th this this. And where did you go up to the hospital or to the doctors? No, to the hospital. Is it a long way? Did you have to go on a train or a bus or what? Uh, yesterday I had to go on the train and the ship on the car. A ship as well? You had to go on to the hospital. That was The next five programmes will examine the implications of the situation in London the schools. Yes, all over the country. Does it? Because I've got that bump on my arm. She's got a bump on her arm. Sure, sure.